So I thought I'd go ahead and take a look at the Bartlett Labs um, Model 1 a replacement expansion interface and the Model 1 uh, the DAM ISC, the system expander. So we've got the replacement expansion interface and the system expander. I've got a couple of 360K floppy drives here. They're double sided, double density, 40 track. So let's power it up. I'll bring on the floppies. Power up the monitor. And we'll power up the hardware down here by plugging in the power if I can do it with one hand. So at this point in time, we'll take a look at a couple of things. The uh, system expander is powered up. System expander has a VGA output, and I'm feeding that VGA output up to this VGA monitor, and we can see on it that the MISC is alive and running. Another fact to note here is I've removed the SD card from the replacement expansion interface, and this way it won't do any floppy emulation. The floppy drives are connected back here on the replacement expansion interface so its floppy controller emulation will be controlling the floppies and finally we've got what I call my workhorse TRS-80, my better one of the two units, it's got the better keyboard on it this has got the lowercase mod on it and it's uh, I believe version 1.2 of the level 2 basic let's go ahead and power it up and it'll boot LDOS here you may see several things happening here on the screen uh, loading up the lowercase driver. I'm actually going out and getting an IP address assigned off my network. The system expander has a Ethernet connector on it. So I have an IP address assigned uh, and then it's done an SMTP call out to get uh, the time back and to set the real time clock. So at this point everything's up and running here. The VGA out here VGA out here is replicating the TRC screen on the VGA monitor, which works really well. Uh, if we take a look at drive 7, so I'm asking for directory of drive 7. Actually, I need to close the doors on the floppy drive. We'll see it go out and read drive 7. And it's currently pulling up a directory of drive 7. If I do a directory of drive 6, it'll access the other floppy drive. And again, we'll see that directory come up as well. Uh, we can look at the master boot hard drive. So the, in, in that case, that's hard drive emulation coming off of over here, and it's partition 0 on the drive. And there's quite a bit of files on it. So as this is set up, drives 0, 1, 2, and 3. Oh boy, I think there's six hard drive partitions on here. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's not correct. I think anyhow, there's hard drive partitions on here. Uh, floppy 0 and 1 are emulated, and then floppy 2 and 3 come around to the physical hard drives, and in LDOS, those are mapped as drive 6 and 7. So we can go into basic here. If I could type basic. And we're in uh, the L basic. And I want to load floppy version 5 slash basic. And that's a little floppy test program. I wrote that'll do nothing but open up files on, open up both drives, write to the files, close them, open them up and read them, and just sit in a loop. Uh, and it's kind of a quick and dirty test of the replacement expansion interface floppy controller. So you can see it running to the floppies, it'll write to the other one. This will just sit in a loop as it runs. Uh, you can see the same video output on the VGA output of the uh, system expander. Uh, I've talked briefly about this before. The system expander is watching 
the memory addresses for the video address uh, lines and when it sees a, a write to a video address uh, byte in memory, you know, address 15360 to 16383. It sees those, it captures them internally, and generates the VGA display from them. If you were to read uh, those video addresses, you would be reading them out of the actual keyboard unit here itself. So it, it's quite an interesting little setup. Uh, a thing to note is you can't format floppies. Uh, using this, it will not actually format. Instead, you basically mount a blank a floppy image as a virtual floppy, and then you do a, an image copy over to a, a physical floppy, and it'll create a blank formatted floppy. A couple other things to look at here quick is, of course, we've got an RS-232 jack on here, which emulates the, uh, the Raider Shack expansion interface serial port. We've got a parallel printer port down here. Uh, the expansion it interface is brought on through this cable here to get over to the uh, system expander. It's rebuffered, it looks like. Uh, it's a very nice stack of hardware here. Uh, there's also a joystick port on the front here, and there's an onboard real time clock. And of course, the uh, hard drives and floppy images are on here, and then there's utility programs that come with it that allow you to mount and dismount various floppy images. Uh, the other interesting thing while this is up and running is I can actually go over to my uh, main computer and FTP to this computer and actually copy files back and forth and I'll add a demonstration of that next here. Something I forgot to mention here is I have to actually start the FTP daemon over here so FTPD We'll start up the FTP daemon on the Model 1. And now that it's up and running, I can actually connect to it from uh, my other computer. So with the Model 1 on the network using the uh, MISE, the System Expander, and the little FTP daemon running, I thought we'd do a quick demonstration of moving files. I'm on my main uh, office machine, and I've got some memory test programs here. I like to move over to it. So if I open up the other Explorer window here, and we type in FTP, we'll find FTP to the 10.0014, that's the address that the um, system expander was assigned uh, when the machine booted. This will connect to it. I could actually hear the floppies uh, spin up back there as it went through, and there are the eight uh, devices that are mapped on the TRS-80 Model 1, and of course we can go into you know, the first partition on the uh, hard drive emulation over there and there's all kinds of good stuff on it and we can browse through these and uh, a minute ago you may have saw me run I think it's on this this floppy 5 yeah floppy v5.basic there it is we can see it over here oops I didn't want to do that but if we uh, go to one of the physical floppy drives over there I can drag and drop from my desktop machine onto the machine over there. I can hear the floppy spinning. You may be able to hear the head stepping in the background on the floppy drive. And using FTP, we are transferring these files onto an actual floppy over on the machine over there. Uh, it's kind of an interesting way to do things here. I've uh, a couple times opened up uh, various DMK and, and other you know, floppy image format or files on my main computer here to uh, pull files out of uses to transfer them. But you know, it's really interesting to be able to use FTP to move content onto or off of the system over there. Uh, it's still copying. I can hear the floppy heads back and forth. And remember that the floppy over there is actually on the replacement expansion interface from Bartlett Labs. So, you know, this is a way to take just a stock TRS-80 Model 1 with Level 2 Basic if you don't have an expansion interface and actually put one together, including controlling actual floppies. Uh, it's an interesting setup. So we've transferred those files over onto the Model 1. Let's go ahead here 
oops, and create a folder. I'll name it temp. And I'm just going to copy those back just to kind of demonstrate two directions. And I'll bring back this test.txt file that happened to be on the floppy as well over there. That was the little test text file that the little floppy v5 program I was running created to write numbers into and then read them back out. And we'll let it copy these back. Don't know if you can hear the floppy head stepping in the background or not. I'm hoping the microphone's picking them up at least somewhat. This is just a really convenient way to move stuff around, and it's just it's an amazing bit of hardware and software to take a little 48K Radio Shack Model 1 and be able to do this on it. If we then look at the test text file that we copied across, there's the file that the little basic program over there writes. It writes the value 0 to 255 into the file, opens it up, reads them back out, validates them, and just sits and loops over and over and over again. So, pretty sweet. Uh, We'll head back over to the Model 1 now, and we'll take a peek at what we ended up with over there. So I'm back over at the Model 1, and you can see here that there was two anonymous connections logged into the little FTP daemon on here. Uh, that was me testing, and then the second session is the session where you saw me copy the files around. I can hit break and exit there, and if we look at, I believe I put these on device 6, these files. There's the files we copied over. Uh, pretty nice. I have no idea if any of these work or not. Select test, RAM, ROM, video. Pull back here and you can see the video test is, is running. Uh, in this case the writes were going to both devices but when it read, it read from the video memory in the keyboard unit. Let's see what it thinks about the ROM. So this is interesting. I have, I believe, a modified ROM in this keyboard where I've actually modified the ROM slightly so I would not expect the checksums to match. And the first ROM doesn't, the AC72 checksum doesn't match. Uh, that's no surprise. I can actually show that here if I hold down break. Oh, it's hard to do with one hand. We'll do this, I'll hold down break. And we'll reset. Interesting. Is it hung up? Okay, I'll just do it with the power. And in this case, I've modified the, uh, the Microsoft Level 2 basic banner just to be my own little banner uh, for my blog here. Let me go ahead and get it booted again. And it's booting. The little auto exec is run. Uh, in the little auto exec you can see that I've got the foreground color set to green, background to black, and the border black. That defines the colors up here on the VGA monitor. It's got back an IP address, which is 10.0.0.14. And we're back. So, uh, very nice. Very, very nice way to work with the machine. Uh, it's the easiest method I've seen of real-time moving files back and forth. So let's try a couple of the RAM test programs here. RAM TS BM2. Oops. Obviously I didn't hit an A there. It's looking through all the devices for a program called R, which it didn't find. RAM TS BM2. Every single bit above address and return the address in error by any representation of the error. Well, I hit the space bar. So I don't actually know if it's doing anything or not. I suspect it's hung up here. It's probably because it wrote all over uh, LDOS. Restart it. Anyhow, 
There's a little example of moving files on and off the system. A quick example of the system expander and the replacement expansion interface. Uh, very impressed with both pieces of hardware. Uh, also impressed with the software and the utilities that come with it. There's a lot of power here for uh, doing really fun things with your Model 1. Hope you enjoyed this little demo, and we'll talk soon.